squid in a broad water. I've been squid in a broad water for probably at least 30 years now, maybe 40 years. So previously, not many people did it. We sort of kept it hush hush. Um, but back in the day, up till only about two years ago, it was mainly calamari squid, which is the bigger tiger type squid with the big heads on them, and, uh, and they're quite big size. And uh, and every year we'd go out, and sometimes we get two, sometimes we get 20, you know, they're, they're always there. And then last year, maybe the year before they started to turn up, at last year they turned up in numbers, was the arrow squid. And the arrow squid, I think the calamari squid are scared of the arrow squids. The arrow squid are a bit like Humboldt squid, they're very aggressive, and they eat each other and they eat anything. Put them in a live bait tank, you know, they don't know they're going to die, they just, they'll eat the live bait and eat each other in the live bait tank, they're aggressive. And Humboldt squid are the same sort of scenario. So I don't know if they've scared the calamari squid away. And I know in Morton Bay, it's a little bit the same scenario. You get a lot of calamari squid at Morton Bay, but the arrow squid seem to be taken over. And arrow squid are by far the most prolific squid in the world. And I don't know if you know this too, but the amount of squid biomass, I don't even measure it, but someone did, but the biomass of squid outdoes the biomass of people on the earth. So it's the most populist animal in the world. So it's our job to eat them. That is correct, and hence we're going to try and dwindle them down a bit tonight. <laughs> so, um, and they are getting, every year on the Gold Coast here, they're getting better and better. It's like their home of their babies, what they do, but their life cycle is about 18 months maximum. So they grow very quick from little babies to that size in, in no time. Um, and every year they come back, this year they're late because the water, we had a lot of fresh water this year, and the water's dirty, and they don't like dirty water, they don't like fresh water, they like nice clean water, simple as that and they don't like too much tide, and they don't like any weed in the water, they're really fussy, but squid are like that all the time anyhow. So a lot of squid, especially the calamari squid, they're held up in like um, back eddies and it, where it's clean and uh, away from the main current. That's where they sit in, that's how you find them. We'll talk about that a bit later though. So, um, so we get two types of squid, we get the calamari squid and we get the um, arrow squid. Calamari squid, I said, a bigger, chunkier, um, and the arrow squid's longer and skinnier and it's more red colour. They, they both taste really good. Can okay. you the southern calamari They're very similar. I think they're related to the ones we get here, the tiger squid or calamari squid. Yeah, they're very similar. I was just down in Melbourne about a month ago and we, we smashed the squid down in Port Phillip Bay there, and big ones. And they look to me exactly the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, but they tend to be more up in Moreton Bay. So if you want to go catch a feed of calamari squid, this is the time of the year to do it, by the way, you'd burn out from um, Cleveland or Manly or somewhere, or go from here up, and you squid around uh, anywhere from Peel up to um, south side of Morton, all through that area on the banks. They're everywhere. And you can go up there and have a 60 squid day, no problems at all, once you find where they are. There's a lot of green zones, so you can be a little bit careful up there in green zones. But the squid out there is extremely good and very prolific. And my favourite area is around um, Dunwich. So around at Aura and back on the banks opposite Dunwich there and in the Dunwich, even the harbour at Dunwich is good too. Okay, and the, you get both arrow and calamari squid. Okay, um, but we'll talk about spots last tonight like, for the broad water here, okay? Just tell you a little bit about, about up north there. Is anyone here from Brisbane? You are? Okay, a few of you are. Okay, so you guys have got it spot on. You've got the squid heaven for this area of town. It's really funny, I just don't quite understand how the arrow squid work. Um, I sort of work them out, but um, as I said, they've only shown it the last few years and I've always squidded in those same areas and never caught one. So the calamari squid, uh, the bigger one, are living um, around weed areas, back eddies, like I said. Um, they love rock walls, they love um, uh, bridge pylons, jetty pylons. And, uh, and I was in channels between sandbanks where you got a lot of weed and you can bend around and you get the back eddy there, that's where they'll sit in, that sort of stuff. But you find that sort of stuff up in the bay there, that's where you'll catch them. Um, if you, how many people are land-based? Okay, a couple of you are, a few of you are. So if you're land-based up in that area, um, I'd be fishing probably Redcliffe Pier, Clontarf, around the Hornibook Bridge, uh, Shawncliffe Bridge Pier, um, and definitely back down around the port area when the lights there, it'd be all right if you can get in there. Um, and even around Manly, off the walls there, it'd be all right too, I think, around the lights. And in the marina, it's good too, if you like, if you can get away fishing in there. Um, but that's up to you guys, with the security. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, down here, if you're land-based, uh, 
I just went down last night, just, I said, we're just going to set show and we can catch one off the main. We were only there for 15 minutes and we got one. Not in 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And our objective was just to get one and go home because we're a bit tired <laughs> working hard. So I had to be back here at six this morning. So we got, got one real quick and then um, had a couple more casts and we come back. I did see two big calamari squid um, and sit in front of a pipe just in front of Aqua there. Um, but I didn't know about my squid jig. Toadfish did, but not the squid. So um, I don't know why they weren't interested. But I got an arrow squid, and uh, that was just off the jetty at, at Labrador, at the pontoon there, at the uh, boat ramp. But if you're land based on the Gold Coast, um, and I wanted to go this morning, but I was just too tired and had to work, but I would be going down the seaway wall, anywhere between the, uh, the tower and all the way along that foreshore front of rocks, where it comes right around to the broadwater, and you're looking back at Labrador, at the Grand, that whole area is squid. I've caught squid all the way from A to Z there and really big ones too. Run out tide's really good. A high tide in the first to run out's good. It needs to be clear. Once that water starts to get dirty, gets weed in it, and it's not weed rush going out, they just disappear. I don't know where they go, they disappear. Okay. Um, but getting back to what I was saying before about the arrow squid, um, the arrow squid tend to be uh, like, I always thought they were temperate, as in the temperature of the water and the, and the air. And when it gets down around sort of 20, which is, has been for the last sort of month or so since they've been here, they tend to just rock up, they just turn up in the broad water. Before that we get nothing. And then they're here until the water gets sort of about 21, 22, um, which is when, when the flat had really come on, and they seem to disappear, they go. Um, and I always thought it was the heat, but then last year, last December, we were up in um, Ellie Beach, we did a boat trip around the islands there for a week, and the water was 30 degrees, 29, 30. And everywhere we went, we caught so many arrows because it was ridiculous. So the, the temperature is not the thing. I don't know what it is. Um, maybe there's a predator that comes in at that time of the year in, in September here in the, or October and they disappear. I'm not sure. It's something. Morton Bay, they tend to be around nearly all year round, but definitely winter is the best, okay, and early spring. Um, any questions on that at all? We'll go through locations a bit later. The gear, okay. Um, obviously, all of you guys must have a flathead rod or a whiting rod, something that's around about seven foot, fairly light. Uh, 2,500 size reel. So um, I use something that's very light on the tip. Quite light. Oops, sorry, matey. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to happen, actually, just to get your attention. I thought you were going to sleep there, mate. I was just looking on you. Uh, but um, so um, I like something very light. The leader I'm using is around about eight to 10 pound. When I chase those big guys off the rocks, I'll use 12 pound, but that's as heavy as I'll go. Um, if I've got those big ones on, you need to net it. You can't lift them out of the water. That's calamari squid. Sometimes they've just got their long tentacle hooked onto the back here, and they'll weigh, some of those weigh two kilos because they fill up with water as well. Sorry, mate. They fill up with water, and uh, you, if you try and lift them, they snap the tentacle. The tentacle actually stretches and snaps. I've had that happen a few times. So you've got to net them, okay? Um, Real size, I said 2,500. Um, when this is just needs rebraiding, but when you're um, fishing, you need to make sure your braid's really thin, okay? And obviously, braids it comes in all different classes and stuff. Um, but that braid there's uh, I don't know what that one is. I think it's actually um, 832, which is suffix. Uh, this one here is. Uh, it's Power Pro 4 pound. It's very light. That's a Zodius rod on a little 2500 sustain, so it's a fairly decent combo. And again, um, I'm running about, I think I ran about 8 pound leader on that one. That's from last night. That's what I caught the squid on last night. Um, and I'm just doing an all bright knot there. You can do uh, different knots there, whatever you like, so it's your favourite type. I find it's not too bad. And I run about a metre of leader at the most. And I run one of those little fast attach clips that you've all got in your bags, I think. And it's size, um, a size one. Okay, small size. Um, yeah, there, that one, there might be a two on that one, I think. Oh, that's a one as well. So they're small. Uh, has anyone ever used those before? Yes, yeah, some of you have. I'll, pass, I'll show you how it works. I'll just quickly grab one. I'll pass it around. You can play with it. Please be careful that um, the prongs are squid jigger sharp. To put my specs on. So this the idea of this is um, you've all got a lot of squid jigs in your bag. They're of different qualities and sizes and types, um, and it's important that you 
Um, understand that after about three or four casts in the same area, if you're not having a squid on, it's generally the colour that they don't want to know about. You've got to change the colour. Okay. Um, and squid are very, very temper temperamental about colour. That's something thing I have learned. If they want pink, that's all they want is pink. If they want white, it's white. Or blue, it's blue. And you can have... Is there, is there a pattern to the colour? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I do find with light, um, if you've got a fairly bright day, whites are really good. If you've got a dark day, pinks and oranges and blues, and that are really, really good silhouette sort of colours or a bit of colour to it. Um, but at the moment, it's like, so that colour there is a bit of bit of everything. It's sort of white and pink at the top, same time. So I'd use that in a fairly bright day. Um, but it would probably work in a dark day because it's got the pink on the back. But um, I'd probably go more to um, the white one. Yeah, something like that sort of colour there. That's nearly all white with a few stripes on it. Um, that I'd use definitely, actually I use that at night time, that's that one there. They glow, some glow, some don't glow too. There's some are UV, some aren't UV. There, there's all different aspects to it. And I'll show you some other things as well. But just a little thing here, something I'm trying to show you here. Um, so it's just a little thing that attaches to the end of your line. It do, does not affect your squid strikes at all. It doesn't affect ladder or anything actually, these things, they're really good. So that's how quick it comes off and that's how quick it goes on. <laughs> it's sharp, so please be careful. I should put a little um, a little cover on the end there. Anyhow, take a punt. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. You can just have a play. Just sort of roll it on one way and roll it off the other way. And just hold it. When you do put it on, you hold the little circle that's attached to your line. Hold it in your hand like so and just put it on like that or take it off like that. Very quick. Because uh, with squid, as I said, you're changing the time and if you keep um, chopping your line down, your, your meat is going to get in like that you need to retie your leader on then. Okay, so that's the attachment. Um, just get back to the braids before I was talking about. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of different braids here. So I'll cut you off a little bit actually. Glasses. <laughs> so why do, I, why do I talk about braids in quality? The difference is... Um, a lot of you guys are boat fishing and those are shore fishing, same scenario. If you're in a boat um, and you've got drift, windage and it's tide and whatever and you're casting out and it's not getting to the bottom and sometimes only like a little 2.5, they don't want any bigger squid jig, that's what they're like on the day. Um, and because your, your braid's too thick, it just doesn't let it get down. You can cast up current and hop it back, but sometimes they don't like it that way, they like it against the current, you pull them against the current that you've got to work out how they want it on the day. Whether it be with the current or against the current, small, big, as I say, colour. Um, so if you've got real thin braid, it allows you to get that little one down, down a lot better. So I wouldn't use over um, 10 pound braid, say normal braid or even eight. But if you get the new super thin braids, you could use up to like you know, 15 or 20, because it's only like eight or 10 pound diameter. Cut off some of this way. They don't care what colour of the brain. They don't care what colour, no, Rob. So um, the, the fluorocarbon will take care of that sort of thing. But they're not really um, shy. The calamari squid are a little bit more shy than the, the arrow squid. The arrow squid is just aggressive. They just want to eat it, eat the squid jig. Uh, and they'll keep coming back and coming back. If it's dunk, 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 and finally they'll grab it. The calamari squid will come up to it, they'll look at it, and then they'll pull back, and then they'll look at it. and. I pull back <laughs> and you might just do a little twitch or something and uh, you'll see him shoot and I'll grab it. They're always on the fall as well. So I'll pass. Uh, you can, and I've done that before as well, mate. Um, the thing is when I do the, some, the I used to just, I used to, years ago, I just cast out, I let it sink and I just wind slowly. I never do any action at all. Um, then I was watching a few Japanese guys, how they do it, and they do a lot of whacking whacking and then they let it sink back down again. Um, and with mono you do that and just stretches and the tip bends over and doesn't do much to the squid jig. Yeah. Squid jig probably might move a little bit but with braid you go to that it jumps. You know. So it's a lot more, uh, a lot better. Yeah. And the Japanese never use um, mono for carp for squid, squidding so stick with the, um, with the braid. So when that's all gone around I'll show you, I'll tell you the difference in those two. Just have a look at the different sizes in it. Um, so braid, thin braid, that's important. As I was saying to you, light thin rods are really, really good. Um, 
these are a couple of combos which we do up every now and then for squidding when it's squid season. Um, again, light tip, a little bit longer than normal rod. I think it's seven, seven foot eight or seven foot six. So really good for shore casting as well. Um, and that's got your katana, and that's got eight pound braid on, of sort of medium quality. So something like that's about 199 bucks, but they're pretty popular. Um, and then you can get specifically made squid reels, but are they any different? I don't think so. <laughs> but um, that's one from Diver called Emeraldus, and that's their squidding range of reels. They're Japanese domestic market, so that's what the Japanese use over in Japan. Um, and we use them here, obviously. They're a shallower spool, because you don't need much line normally for squidding, normally 100 metres is plenty. You're never going to cast 100 metres, really, for squidding. Um, although, last night I was trying to get to the channel as far as I could, which I could, could have cast 100 metres, I got more. <laughs> but generally you don't really worry about it too much. Um, and Shimano do one called a Cephia. So Cephia and Emeraldus in Japanese relates to squidding, I guess. Uh, same rod again, um, and that's got a double handle on that one, so that's the Shimano's squidding reel, so if you're BB, looks like that. Okay. Uh, that's the dearest one, I think. It's 569, but we've got a special 369 tonight. What's the um, benefit of the double handle? What's the um, thinking behind that? If you're slightly uncoherent in, in hand and grabbing the handle. <laughs> you got double the chance of getting it. <laughs> um, it's sort of like a balancing thing? Right? No, it is a balancing actually. It's mm -hmm. extremely smooth. If you can have a seven quick one, you'll see what I'm saying. Very smooth, isn't it? Very balanced is probably the word for it. Yeah. I think that's what it's all about. So when, when we get the squid rods here, these are, these are like Australian design type squid rods. But when we get the, the Japanese version, like the, the Emeraldus rods or the uh, Shimano Cephia rods, they're really long, they're eight foot and they're too heavy. So, and this is all we can buy in squid rods normally. So they're like P1 to three, which is like um, 15 to 40 pound braid. We're never gonna use 40 pound braid for squid. But in Japan they do, because they're casting off rocks and in the sea, now they are trying to get a hundred meter cast over the kelp and they're catching squid that are five or six kilos. They're, they're bloody monsters, you know, their heads on big as my fist. So um, it's a different karagi. Pacific. Sorry, karagi squid. Karagi squid, yeah, that's why the karagi would you cut it up. <laughs> but um, so it's the reels obviously is no different, but the rods are too heavy in my book. I like a lot a lot soft to tip. Our squid aren't that big, we're not casting that far and we don't need that heavy, we need more action in the tip. And they use a lot bigger squid jigs, they tend to use more three and a halves to about fives, which are quite a big squid jig, right? Uh, our squid jigs are two, two and a halves, threes, that's our popular one. When we're out of the boat during the drifting, we might use three and a halves, which we'll talk about in a minute. So hence, we don't do much with the proper squid rods because they're just not suited for our thing. But some of our customers want it, and I do know that uh, we sold a couple actually recently, I haven't got any left at the moment, but the new Emerald is, is designed for Australian squid finally. <laughs> I think it's 0 0.8 to 1.5 p, which is up to 30 pound from about 15, 10, 10 pound. It's a little bit lighter. Um, any questions on the rods and reels, folks, and the line? We've got all that. Can you just use any sort of <coughs> slow action? Of course you can, but not a solid glass. Uh, sort of no, hollow, hollow carbon or, or graphite tipped or something like that. Yeah. Like, like I would even use, if I was out of the boat, this is Stewie's um, slow pitch jigging rod, <laughs> which he uses for snapper, but I would even use that for squidding yeah. because the tip's extremely soft on it. Yeah. So the idea of the soft tip is that, um, it doesn't need to be long when you cast down the boat especially, but the idea of the soft tip is when they pull backwards um, that you don't snap their tentacles off. And some drags on reels aren't the best. Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you, sir. Some of the drags on reels aren't the best for um, a little bit like eh, eh, eh. Then when that eh, eh happens, you snap the tentacles off, okay? Uh, so you want to be fluent, smooth, or a soft tip rod that will take that. If it is a bit rough, it'll take the action out uh, and, and not lose the, the squid. That braid that went around, so the, the yellow one, guys, is um, 
Power Pro 5 pan. Okay. And the white one was thinner, right? You all saw that one, the white one was thinner. It's 12 pound in the super duper new stuff. So it's getting so really high quality. That's YGK, that's their own brand. So YGK are the, ma the biggest makers in Japan. They make all of um, Diver's braids, all of Shimano's braids, and all of uh, Sunline's braids, as far as I know. 12, 12. That's as, that's as, as thin as I've ever seen 12 pound in the world. It's 0 0.5 PE, which is theoretically five pound diameter. Mm. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it comes out 100 meters, but for squidding, it's enough. Uh, to you guys, it's about 42 bucks. It's 59. How much less than that? 100 meters, which is enough top shot for squidding. Yeah. Yeah. But it allows your squid jig to get down real easy. Sorry, mate? Right? Yeah, very good. Very good. So yeah. How much do you say with that, that, that pack? Uh, $42. Yeah. $42. It's called Finesse Shangri La. It's in Shangri La, but not quite spelled the same. X Braid 8, WX8. Yeah. So it's 8 ply, and uh, there is 8 ply in 6 and 8 pound in other brands now. Normally only used to get in about 20, but now it's getting smaller. Because um, it's really hard to make very thin line, uh, as in to wrap it. Uh, and, but the thickness of this outdoes any other brand in 6 or 8, plus 12. Yeah. Sorry to ask, but can you say get down to me? Yeah, so jig needs to get to the bottom, needs to sink down. And because most of these... You don't want a fast fall jig, okay? So even if you're fishing in current, I prefer to cast as far as I can up into the current, let it come down that way, rather than have a heavy one I can just throw out the side and let it fall down to the bottom. In, and some guys do add weight to their line. Some guys even put a ball sink in front of it. I've seen a lot of different things done. I don't like to do any of that. Um, I want my jig to be, be going down slowly and they'll come straight up and grab it on the fall. And um, if it goes fast, I think they're not really interested in it too much, unless they're thick, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, when you go to your bigger sizes, though, like this sort of size here, which is 3.5, that's, um, let's give you an idea on weight, that's 18 grams, and little 2.5 is 10. So it's double the weight, a little bit, probably maybe half the surface area in size. So it's obviously going to sink not quite as um, slow as that, it'll sink faster. Um, but that'll hold itself in the current better, but that will catch more squid because it sinks slower. What do I think it is? Squid oh, the prawn. Oh. It emanates a prawn. Uh, and there's always prawns in the water most year round. Uh, bigger ones, obviously, in season. Um, but that's the braid, that's the leader. Uh, the fluorocarbon leader, obviously, is, is the go. Um, we've talked about the clips. I'll go now to the squid jigs. Is that all right? So the squid jigs. This is the biggest part. Um, as I said, colours before, bright colours. Well, the other day I took my, my mate over from uh, Martins over from Ireland and we went out flatter fishing and we spent, I said we got an hour flatter fishing and an hour squidding. And um, anyhow, we're not doing an hour and a half flathead fishing and about 20 minutes squidding, but we got eight squid and we lost about eight because we had a full on session. They just went crazy. Our floaters were going off and our casting to going off and there was squid everywhere um, and it was really good that was only last uh, Tuesday last week Wednesday last week and um, but he was only using just the um, because he bought it and it came out somewhere we sell them too the um, I think you guys have got most he's got one in the bag just a pink um, Jarvis Walker one and I could not believe it he was like outdoing me and I was using like $30 squid cheeks. <laughs> yeah, no one told the squid. Um, but I didn't have a pink and he had a pink one. So maybe it was a pink on the day, I don't know. Um, but what I'm getting at is colours are very important, like I said earlier. So in your, in your kitty, you've just got to have at least one pink. I'd have one pink, if I'm going to have colours, one pink, one white, maybe a blue, maybe an orange. And then there's a couple of deer ones that you should probably look at. I think you guys have all got a clinch, the big size in your bag. That's what I use to, exactly the same ones I use in a multitude of colours um, that I sit on my rods when I'm drifting in the boat. Okay, now this is a strange part. If you're in shore base and you just want to throw a squid jig out like we do in the boat and set it sit there, um, it won't work from the shore because it doesn't move. Even with the current, it doesn't move much. 
but when you're in a boat, you're dr drifting and it sort of tends to lift itself off the bottom a bit because of, of the drift. And that's perfect because it's just skimming the bottom off the bottom sort of thing. You're obviously on sand or a bit of seaweed and, um, and they love it. And so we use that bigger size three or a 3.5 to do that, okay? Or a four even. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing uh, in that, in using on those big ones, is I'm casting, if I'm in say four metres deep, I'll cast at about five metres or six. And I normally don't cast it, so, so I pull up my boat and I don't simply just cast out the back because it'll never get to the bottom because you're going to be drifting that way with the current. And it hasn't, an, it, it's still, the momentum of the boat's still going forward and I just can't get down there. So I wait till I nearly stop. So I'll throw out my casting one first, the right way, long distance, put it in the right hole, let it sink down. While that's happening, by that time the boat's slowed down a bit, I'll still cast my other one forward of the boat and just the momentum and the current will come down. It'll hit the bottom generally there and I've got a little bit of slack line, so I'll just wind up that little bit of slack line. So it's just sort of hanging down. It will make its way up a little bit on an angle like that. Depends on the wind and everything. And, um, and I might just let a little bit more line out so it sort of touches the bottom. But you need to check that about every maybe uh, 10 casts of the other one because it will drag up snot weed and weed onto the hooks. If you have any weed on those hooks, they don't want to know about it. They won't even look at your squidgy. So they know. Sorry, that's all right. Man. They are, the 3 or 3.5s are, yes, that's correct. Uh, there are days when the wind's blowing 15 or 20 knots. <laughs> and with the, with the current, say, those days you're doing two knots of drift, um, yeah, it won't work. You'll need to put a ball sinker or something on. So everything um, you're doing on a boat, mm. you're on a jet ski? 100%. Yeah, yeah kayak even, if you've got kayaks. Yeah, yeah we've got a, I've got a few customers that, that's ki um, that squid out their kayaks in the broadwood and they do really well. Yeah. I don't know, mate, Sean, he went out with Brad Smith and uh, learnt, with Clint, sorry, and learned how to do it, because I don't know if you'll follow Clint's char what a charter boat, but they do really well. And uh, he's one of the pioneers of, of ar um, arrow squid squidding on the Gold Coast, sorry. And uh, so he went he learned how to do it, where to do it, and then he just goes out his kayak now and gets them all the time. Yeah. So if you want to do a charter to learn about squidding, go with um, Brad Smith's charters with Clint. Okay. You can hire the boat, I think like four is you can go out, it'll be fairly cheap, I think. Just tell me I'm target squid. Um, getting back to the squid jigs. Okay, so we've got pinks, um, we've got oranges, and some have pearlescent bodies, so there's three different or four different wraps of underneath. You've got a gold foil, which is like that big fellow there, it's got gold foil under. I'll pass that around so you can see what I'm talking about as it's coming around. Actually, that's a pearl, but it's gold foil. Thanks, mate. Um, and then you've got a red foil, which is... It's got sort of a red foil under it. I'm going to have to say that's about the red foil. It is underneath there. Thank you. And um, you've got... Um, just like a white, as I say, a white background body, like a holographic type body. That's that fellow there. Two gold, red, white going around. Um, and that's the pearl lesson one I was telling about, pearl. So that's the four types of foil, the four main colours. And then now you've got the new, uh, they've always have been clear, right? Clear belly. Um, but uh, Shimano brought out um, this clinch uh, range with... Uh, uh, with a shimmer inside of them. So this one here, the flash boost they call it. I used this last year when it first came out, this colour actually. And you, if you go back to some of our older videos, you'll see them all caught on that. That was really good. And I, I haven't used this year because I haven't had to get them until just now. They haven't come in again this week. So they've been out of, order, out of supply forever. But now they're back in stock and they will be trying it again. Um, but if, if, you, if you just hold it, you'll see it shimmer. So in the sunlight, it actually looks like a live prawn. It's actually flicking off internal, like it's alive. Um, green. Sorry? Cut out the green. Green's good too, but green foil is very limited on branding, where, where to get it. Um, but the green colour on the top's good, Tomo. Yeah, good, mate. Um, and then 
Um, I don't know if any of you guys have got any of the Ozuri, any of the old Ozuri Pro Hunters, which were, they had legs on them, like that sort of thing, which I'll pass around in a sec. So if you do have those, Shrimp Hunter they're called, sorry. Um, they're like legendary squid jigs and they stopped making them and then, then they brought it back out again this, this year under the brand Jewel, which is like Jewel and Yozuri are very uh, famous in squid jigs in, in Japan. And I've been using these. I took one down to Melbourne. This, that's what I had down in Melbourne. Oh my gosh, I just caught so many squid. Um, but that's another one. The little legs, um, obviously when you're winding it, they flick through the water like it's alive. They're bigger than the Melbourne squid? They're bigger. <laughs> <laughs> There's big ones, they're huge. Um, I've got the video, I just haven't posted it yet, but I can do it. So that's now five different types going around, five different foils and styles. Um, and the last one's probably going to be this fellow here. So UV. So UV. Um, which is in quite a few of these. What it does, it if you can turn the lights out, but um, I might just grab one of you guys to turn that light switch if you don't mind. Thank you, my friend. Just turn that out for a sec. So I've just glowing that with the torch. This is a UV torch, okay? So if I just hit this with that over there, very, very quickly, it doesn't have long to charge up. Can you all see that at all? Yeah. So it's a UV glow. And that's what I used last night. And as soon as I charged it, I had the UV in my pocket, <laughs> as I do, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it helped. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right, Rob. <laughs> um, other ones you see, um, I'll just hold this up. Sorry about the lights off for a sec, guys, but you need to see all this. How long so, the charge light? Oh, it stays only for about probably five minutes. Oh, and you just hit it again. It's very, it's very quick, like five seconds. So UV one, it's, it's like using a flash. You could use a flash boost, like a flash off the old camera. That'll work too. Um, I can't see that, sorry guys. <laughs> it's, uh, it's eye and uh, the back part there glows, if you can see that. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, that's the UV colour, so if I put the torch on, see how bright it is? Can you see that? So that's the UV colour. Um, this is not UV, it doesn't do anything. Okay, you see the difference? Does that make sense? That doesn't, doesn't glow up, but you just hit um, some of these other ones like that. See how bright that is now? So they're better for night? Yeah, they're better for night and also daytime too. So obviously they see different how we see and um, UV is enhanced. The, the squid is, or the, oh, sorry, the squid jig is enhanced a lot. So um, it makes a big difference. Most of the pinks are, are UV. Um, some have like that fella has a stripe down at UV. You can see that. I don't know if I'm holding on properly there. Sorry, like that. Yeah, there you go. Sorry. Um, and it does make a difference. That one there's super UV. I've been using one of these on my floaters too. Um, it's a Daiwa. I think you might have one of these too. I'm not sure. In your bag. Uh, but they're really, really good. If you don't, they're really good. You can see that. Um, I'll just turn that light switch back on. Thank you, my friend. These are another new one. Um, these are um, also Yozuri. They are UV as well, as you can see there. Um, but these have little wings on the side. They have a hard head, and these things catch squid, but they are very expensive. They're like even 36 bucks. But even your price would be like um, around 25 bucks or something like that. But um, but the, everything, the fins and everything on there is UV and glows um, and they have a different head, like a hard head on them so they actually really shoot through the water and swim and when you pull on it, it sort of darts around a bit like a squid, uh, like a, uh, a soft plastic and something like a prawn shrimp sort of thing, they dart around. The foil's also different too, that's your green foil, Tom. <laughs> I'll have to green when I pass that around as well. Thanks, mate. Um, I do a blue one. The blue one I know recently has been really good in the broadboard as well. Not this one because this one's only just come out this today, brand new. Um, but it's been good. Um, yeah. So with squid jigs, you got a fair few in your packet there. Have a look what you got. What you haven't got, you know we got it. <laughs> that sounds right. <laughs> That'll do the do the trick. Um, 
There is a couple of tricks to using a squid jig though. There's um, enhancement. And enhancement means um, what I use on everything. Have I got any here? Oh, this one, S-Factor. So you, most of you, who doesn't, who flatter fish is here with plastics? You should all have S-Factor, I would dare think you guys. And those of you who don't, you should get some. Because it's the greatest thing on any lure. Um, but all you do is you just, um, I'll just take this top off here. You just put a little smear onto your finger and then wipe it onto the squid jig. So, uh, so uh, both sides, yeah. So just, I just put a little bit on like that. Oh, actually, that's the oil part, but that's all right. <laughs> Same deal. Always just start it and they're full of oil. So what I'll do is I'll just put a wipe on this side and a wipe on that side. I put it behind the feather because I don't want, it in, don't want the feather, the side part that sticks out, because that's what gets them going. You don't want to get that stuck to the side of the head because it won't open up and won't do its thing. So I always put it a little bit of distance back from the feather and just wipe it down towards the two sides. I even wipe it that way on the prong. Hopefully he's going to grab the prong <laughs> or lash out the prong, you know, because it smells what they like. There is no smell to S-Factor. It's a pheromone. It's what makes them want to eat it or fish want to eat your bait. It's, uh, the trouble is, like I was on last night, when I saw those two big squeal, I quickly just wiped a bit on there and I threw it out and they looked at it and then they just went away, they were shy. And then, because it was um, a light from a street light down on the at Labrador there, and then I just walked along the edge and I thought, oh, there's another one, so I cast that to that. And I'm just slowly winding it. I wiped that on this time, right? And it comes straight up and I thought, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. And it's a massive toadfish. I thought, <laughs> 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 I was taken, I was got ripped off. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but... No, they don't. They, well, they do. Um, okay, if you've got lights to the back of the boat, and that's what we found up at Early Beach that time, they'll just, they swim around in big circles. The, the whole pack just keeps, you look at the back of the boat and there's like a hundred of them all swimming. And then they'll disappear and they'll go out just beyond the light. So if you cast a squid jig out in the light, you've never got one. Just cast just beyond the light, maybe a metre behind it, straight away on, straight away on. We're so, not, we're not yes, they're yeah, good up there. Yes. <coughs> yes. Different scenarios. So the lights. So using like a green light, mate, or yeah, yeah green or blue light. So the green and blue lights are different to the white light. Like we, uh, most of our lights now are LED too. Um, but the ones that you put in the water. And actually, I just sold the last one today. Unfortunately, I've got a customer bought it. But um, we sell them. They're expensive. They run about eighty dollars for a little one, 100, 140 for the real big one, um, and they're like. They're all the way around green. You put it in the water, it lights up probably about the size of this room around the boat. And um, I have done that last year, and I think I've posted it maybe, or maybe I haven't posted it yet, but um, that was down near Kuraji in the deep water there. It's about eight metres deep, six metres deep. And yeah, I had squid all around the boat, swim around the boat. We got a few, they were a bit shy though, but definitely attracted them to the boat because there's, there's so much little bait and little worm things swimming around the light. And they're coming in and feeding on that. So what colours are good going? Green and uh, green and, bl and blue, I believe, is number one. Uh, but it's very hard to get a blue light unless you've got the like aquamarine sort of lights in your boat. Um, but otherwise, the drop out of the side ones, most of the ones you get are green. I've got a green one. Yeah, they're very good. So we normally do sell them. Seven, I'll have them all stocked next week, something like that. Uh, and we normally stock the little one in the bit in the medium. The big one's a bit too big and it's a bit expensive. Okay. So is it better doing it if you're land-based, night or day? No, it doesn't matter. High tide's a secret. Yep. High tide. It's a high tide, uh, last hour of the run in, first hour of the run out. Doesn't matter, day or night? Not really. Well, I lie about that. If you've got early morning, late afternoon is best, or yep. evening. Yep. Um, but middle of the day, yeah, you probably won't get much. Yep. The well, reason being... Tiger and arrows? Both. Yeah. Um, the reason being, uh, you just got too much boat traffic, and they just shy down a little bit. You know, I can get the broad water at my best spots in the middle of the day and the tide's right, you know, I might get three or four, maybe six um, arrows or in the odd calamari. But if it was that same tide at seven in the morning, I'll get 10 or 15 maybe, you know. And night time, uh, I might get 10. The, they tend to be around jetties best at night time, around the lights. 
Yeah, that's right, mate. And if you can get it, time that with the um, with the dark and the lights being on, um, it's perfect. Which is like tonight. Yeah. So last night we actually just missed the tide. I wanted to get the high tide, but time got out of here and got home, got, got down there. It was, I think it was about seven thirty, quarter to eight. It was ready to start and run out. So I missed the top of the tide, um, and the tide was running fairly hard. So it would have been better maybe an hour earlier. So you want that slack tide. Okay, any questions on the squid jigs, folks? No, all good. Um, you had one with the rattler in it. Yes, I did. So the rattler is the clinch one, I think. No? <laughs> well, the first one you announced earlier. Was it? Oh, it might be down there. It might be down the back there somewhere. Right. So the rattle one um, doesn't make any difference. Look, um, I know I've caught squid on it, but I don't really think it makes a big difference. Right. Yep. Yep. So, because 90% of them don't have rattles, so... Otherwise, they'd be in every one of them. That's why I look at it. Yeah. And with the colours, the colours can be totally random. Very. And you need to find out on the day, that's hence the fast touch system. And I just keep changing. Like I said, four cars in the same area, if I don't get a squid, they're either not there or it's my colour. Yeah. And rather than move to another spot, I'll change. Yeah. Quick needs, change. Someone needs to design one where it actually changes colour. <laughs> yeah, that'd be right, wouldn't it? <laughs> There's actually one <laughs> that had lights in them. Uh, LED lights, I don't know why they stopped making them, but they were really good. They had uh, red, blue, green, um, and they water activated little points on it, so as soon as hit the water, just turned on and flashed. Really good. Um, but they didn't really work, so they, didn't, they stopped making them. Yeah. Have you ever uh, weighted your jigs at all, Dougie, with um, Yeah, like, so like wire, wire lead or whatever? Yes, yes I have. And, more level at, those and you can actually do that um, either around the back or around the front where the, where the lead is. So if you want to make it more nose heavy at that end, or at the other end, just around up the shaft from where the metal joins onto the body there, just wrap it around there a little bit. Um, it works really well. The other thing you can do too is some of them actually have, a, might have a couple left downstairs. They weren't a big seller, but um, they were made from River to Sea, um, the candy lures. Um, they had a, um, like a little, a little, eyelet underneath and you could attach the weights to that and it made it uh, sort of glide that actually you can, they wouldn't actually hit nose down a glide no it didn't really make much difference at all um I, I believe level floating is actually even better than nose floating like you're saying um but yeah if if they're on they're generally going to hit it on the on the fall um but sometimes when i do the jerk up i get them as well that, so that case, the nose is up and the tail's down, and, and I get hit. I think it does. I think if they're hungry, they're gonna eat it. Simple as that. Um, one thing I was gonna say was um, with the uh, which one was it? This one here, the the natural colour. I didn't talk about natural colours um, and new colours. The other two uh, styles you can get. So um, they tend to be the natural ones. Tend to be more buoyant sinking, like you're saying. And the, the dress colour ones tend to be more nose sinking. Um, but these fellows here, I'll pass it around. Last year I, I got really a lot on that too. But this year it's only just come back in stock again. So I haven't tried it this season yet. But last year that one was fantastic as well. That's actually on my other squid rod here, this one here. That's a Cephia as well. Jig. Um, but a lot of these jigs, probably half of them actually are neutral buoyancy. So they'll actually sink pretty well flat, just naturally, especially the better ones, yeah. Um, that's about it. Any other questions on the squid jigs at all, folks? What does water do when yeah, so um, I'm gonna get to that in a moment, but generally um, for the calamari squid, it can be only a metre deep. Um, a lot of times I've been flatter fishing in the shallows and seen massive ones swim past me in water that deep, you know? Um, and so if you flathead fish on these, which are, most of you guys will be at the moment, always have a squid jig in the boat ready to go. Because if you see one and you throw it straight at it, they'll just, because they follow your soft plastic up, you'll get it straight away. They're, just, they're suckers, they just eat it, eat squid jig. But by the time you get it out of the tackle box and tie it on, or even clip it on, they're gone. You have to be on the money straight away. If you see your mate get one, before he even knows that you've cast a squid jig behind his lure, okay? <laughs> and stole his squid. Um, getting back to that S factor before, the S factor which you wiped on, there's a couple of other things, products you can get, um, which is fairly popular. This is made by Eco Gear. 
One's Eggy Max, the stuff here. So you spray that onto your squid jig. You see a lot of guys in Japan do this. Got a little Japanese cartoon in the back how to do it. Get my wife to read that one. Uh, but that one there smells like tuna roll. Like, but with something in it. Different to, it's like tuna roll, but not tuna roll. Um, this one here is called Glow Max. Not quite sure they call it Glow Max, so it doesn't glow. <laughs> so it is like a, a bit of a greeny colour, but more yellow actually. But it <coughs> definitely does not glow. Um, but it's got similar smell to that one, just a different colour tin. Um, so that's another couple of products you can use. And, um, and obviously the, the S-Factor. Is, is, is that S-Factor stuff as good as the tuna stuff? I'd say it's better. Sorry? My personal, I'd say it's better. Yeah, yeah. it hangs on better. Um, but I've got a couple of mates who swear by the Eggy Max, that one there. And every time I go squidding with them, that's what they spray every throw. I, I apply that sort of every five or ten throws, okay. maybe so ten. Uh, the uh, Eggy Max, I've never tried it on lures. Right. I've used this one all the lures all the time. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that works for those of you who may be flatter fish at the moment too, um, these definitely work on uh, squid, are little tiny vibes like that type of thing. So you get a double banger, you can catch flathead and other species as well as squid just um, jigging out in the broad water here. Lamb based, I haven't tried it yet, so I can't say if it works lamb based. You'd need to try. Um, but you need to get a bit of distance in the cast. The beauty of these is they're heavy. So that little fella's like 10 grams. Um, and I've, uh, I, I, don't, I haven't personally, but I know I've made so called them on the bigger size, which only a tiny bit bigger. Uh, and it's 14 grams, half ounce. Pass yeah, I'll pass that around, mate. Yeah, I'll pass a, a couple around. I'll actually, I'll give you those two. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry, buddy. Thank you. Um, but there's something that you can do. So that, if the kids are fishing with you because they get a bit bored and getting them to do the action, I'm going to show you in a moment, getting them to do the action, sometimes they don't want to really know about it. But with this thing, they can throw it out and hop it and just wind it in on the bottom and it'll catch a squid, but it'll definitely um, catch your flatties and stuff like that as well. So it keeps them occupied because kids are hard to keep occupied. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> um, Okay, the last thing I want to show you is a tool. Um, a lot of people say, you know, don't just let squids go <laughs> and breathe in until they finally die. Um, they have three hearts, they take a bit to kill them, okay? So, <laughs> um, you can get this little icky spike, or you can give them the karate chop on the back of the head, which you've seen probably on YouTube, and they go all white and they just die, okay? And it does work, but you want to make sure you get something hard to do, otherwise you'll break something in the boat. Um, because they're heavy-handed you are. This thing here, you actually stick it up behind his head and just push in and it kills him straight away in, in the back here sort of thing. Um, it shows on YouTube how to do that, but I didn't take a video of it yet of how to do that. I only use it on the biggest squid. I don't use it on the little squid. Little squid die pretty quick, but the big ones tend to hang on a bit. So I like to put them out of their misery. Um, I do keep a little esky of ice. So I put my squid straight on ice. and That sort of humanely kills them pretty quick as well. Um, they're pretty robust things, like they don't sort of go off like fish does in the heat as bad, you know. So they're pretty good. Uh, they're made by Emeraldus, which is part of the of the Daiwa squid family. Um, another thing, guys, um, for those of you who boat fish, I did a, a year before last, I was out <coughs> uh, playing around, because I know down in um, so Melbourne they use a lot of squid floats with squid jigs hanging off it. And for me, it's always been keep the squid jig moving, work it, whatever. And uh, I didn't believe they would just take a, a, a squid jig just sitting mid-water doing nothing. Anyhow, I was fishing around Waybreak Island at night time, it was a full moon, and I absolutely demolished the big calamari squid. Um, I don't know how many I got. Um, but what I do know is um, I had, I couldn't obviously throw two rods at work, two rods, because they were on straight away and a really big squid. So I thought, I'm going to try this float technique. So I put um, a float stopper bead on there. I had a swivel about that far up from my squid jig. And, I just, and it was about 10 foot deep where I was. So I moved it to about six or eight feet, two meters deep, my little float stopper bead. And that, that, what that means is when you cast it out, this is down near the squid jig. 
and when it hits the water, it slides up, it hits the bead, and that's the depth, which is about two metres or so. And I threw it out, and I just went to grab my other rod and ready that this rod was was moving like this. I'm going, oh, this was a squid already. And next thing, a big squid come up. And um, consecutively, I think I caught probably half, maybe 10 at least on that float that night. And I've tried it a few times since and done really well, but I haven't caught many calamari squid except for two years. It's been quite well, at least a year. So, um, yeah, they do. Um, more popular down south, okay, but, um, but it does work up here. So I, I didn't bring one of those up, but I got them downstairs. What the gentleman was talking about, it's like a, a stainless steel spike, like a spoke of a bicycle with a little aisle on the end which you tie your line to. And this end's got the prongs off a squid jig on the other end and you shove a pilchard on there or a garfish or a piece of flesh or whatever and, um, and throw it out, jet it under the float, right? And let, it, and let it do that same technique and it's just in the water. Sorry, mate. Peel potato. Peel potato. I haven't heard of that one. Okay. Oh, wow. Well. Okay. I'll, I'll stick to the peel <laughs> But uh, maybe you could spray this peel potato. That one <laughs> might work. Um, Tommy Ruffs. Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's factor. Yeah, it's factor. It's good on bait as well. That's right. Correct. Uh, so, but definitely give the float technique. For those of you on getting it, the guys off the jetties and the, and the rock walls and that that are squidding. That is the one thing you can do, as I said before, you, if you throw it and let it sit on the bottom, it won't work. But if you throw it out on a float and just let it sit there, getting it not to drift in the current is obviously going to be hard, right? Um, but it will work. It'll work for you guys. If, you, if you've got current or wind that's going straight out from where you are, definitely give it a crack. Um, in the boat, I don't use it at night time. If you're on your own or, or you'd, um, you've got the uh, area of maybe two guys and two floats and two casting, so you've got four lines out, give it a crack. Definitely works. Um, that's probably about it on the gear, I think. Any other questions on the gear, anyone? All good on the gear? Okay, so technique. Um, if I'm fishing for uh, the calamari squid, um, which is the bigger ones, I'm looking, actually I'll draw it probably first, but I've got a map on where to go, you've got that map there as well. I'll just draw this up though, just a scenario. I'll step out of the way in a sec for, for you, Robbie, in a minute. Uh, let's just say, um, Okay, so let's just say this, this is, um, sorry, real quick. So all that red and that green line is sandbank, okay? So this is just imagine somewhere off Dunwich, it's a little bit like this. And this is the Dunwich, the channel going down to Amity Points out that way. And you'll get like a little, Obviously more, there's like a little channel goes through like that, and then it sort of goes in like that. And you'll get these eddies in the sandbank. And it's only about probably maybe six or eight foot deep here. And here's nearly out at low tide, but at high tide it's about a metre and a half, low tide maybe that deep. Um, and you've got weedle on the edge like that, which is in the main channel. So what I do, um, if it was high tide, right, um, I'm going to cast... Um, all the way along this bank here to the edge of the weed and just work along that that um, along that edge there and 
till I come to the end of the weed here and, I'll, and I'm throwing my jig right on the edge of the weed and just let that sink down, sink down. So there's any that are sitting in here, they'll see you jigged, they'll see it hit the water and they'll probably come out straight away and they'll follow it down because that drops off pretty quick on there and they'll follow it down and hopefully you'll get get one, you know. Um, I will work it back to the to the boat, the boat sitting out here and my, my action will be um, to lift it Probably better. Take this off for a sec. So my action will be um, to cast it out as in that position. I let it sink down. I know it's going down to the weed. When I let it sink, I always leave the bar arm open. If you cast it out and you flick it straight back, you're going to drag it away out to here by the time it's hit the bottom. Okay, you want it to fall right down the edge of the weed all the way to the bottom. So to do that, you leave that open. You'll see a little bit of drag back, but that'll just pull off as it's sinking down. So that's the first trick. Um, and then I'll just um, take out the slack, but the first lift I'll do, I'll just feel the weight. And if, I feel, if it feels heavier than my squid jig, they're ready on there. I'll give it a bit of a, a set, to set the hook. Um, and then you'll feel, like a, if they're on there, you'll feel it pull backwards. It'll be like, uh, 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 uh. Uh, if, you may think you snagged at first, but until you feel that, shutter, um, that's them. My drag's always set quite light. It's loose because I had the squid jig done last night. <laughs> but my, my jag's quite light. I can just grab it and just um, pull it off really easy. So a lot of, a lot of um, light drag's better than any tight drag because you'll, you'll snap the um, tentacles off and if your rod's too stiff, you'll definitely snap the tentacles off. Um, sometimes they will grab it on the fall and, and take it right into their mouth, actually, and they get all their legs caught around the squid jig. That's the perfect one. You can just lift those in the boat. Um, but the ones that are lashed out um, and grabbed it with their end tentacle, you just got to be really careful with them. But you've got to keep the weight on the whole time, otherwise they'll drop off. Okay? And, uh, just, and I'm just slightly wider, but I'll work it up, drop it back down, take out the slack, and then I might do a big lift two big lifts like that, and then drop it back down, wait, and then just take out a little bit of a slack again. Feel if it's on there, there's not one on there, I'll, I'll just maybe just do a bit of winding. They might be looking at it, as soon as you start winding, they might grab it. It's just a, a different action to get them going. Once you know that action, just keep doing it all the time so you're gonna catch more. So is it a violent action? Just to... uh, the, some, if I'm not getting nothing after about two or three casts, it becomes a bit violent. <laughs> I'm thinking, well, I'm going to get these guys going, you know. I um, know I've caught squid here before, and um, you can't see it on the sounder, though. I've never been able to see, see squid on the sounder. And if I'm shore based, um, I'm guessing, because I'm casting up, you can't see. With, oh, you can see with polaroid glasses, though, but you can't see them down deep, right? And you're the opposite, because you're casting from here out over that weed trying to get to the deep, trying to get it dropped down on the deep and then lift it up. And once you get level with the weed, you gotta wind a little bit faster and skim it across the top of the weed. But pausing, so once you get up near the top and you can see a little bit near the top, make sure you have polo glasses on. At that point, it's in, in, you're above the weed, you need to, you know, you got a meter, say, of depth between the top of the weed and you, uh, the water's level, sorry. You then quickly just drop your rod tip down, let it fall back down. If there's any in the area, they'll come and grab it. Or they'll come out of the weed and grab it. So you always uh, let it hit the bottom? The always, yeah, I do. Um, it's a risk you take, particularly in like the rock wall over here. Um, and the kanji loves eating <coughs> squid jigs. And the, and the <laughs> divers who go diving love to catch the squid jigs. <laughs> um, but, um, I, you know, on the rock wall, I'll do it uh, until I'm at the edge of the main lot of rocks. Then I won't do it after that because it's too risky. And I'll just slightly wind across the top of the rocks. But once I see it come to the top, I'll then just stop for a second, let it fall back down nearly to the rocks. Then I'll start winding again. You've just got to feel where you've got to wear polarized glasses. You've got to be on it all the time. That's the secret so to get them. Just a yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, so cast it out, um, bail arm open, hits the bottom, so go slack, your line. When you're using braid, you'll see it, which mono doesn't do. Um, it'll come along the top and your braid your line from here down to the water level. When they meet, that means it's hit the bottom. And you watch the braid, you see it at that point. At that point there, you click, click the um, bale across. And then just, as I said, just sl go to slowly lift it. And if you feel weight on there, just strike a little bit, set that hook in. Then you'll feel them pulling on it. Yep. 
Um, or if you don't feel anything, um, I, the first couple of lifts I just do a little lift and let it go back down again and then take it slack and then maybe do a couple of winds. Um, not till probably the second or third cast, then I might do, I'll still do the same start off like that. But once I'm getting out to a bit deeper water, it's coming in, um, I'll let it go away to the bottom and I know I've got at least two or three metres, I can do a fairly aggressive lift up. I'll lift it up and then I'll let it fall again. And you do get a lot of squid that way. Yeah, I've learnt that. Particularly arrow squid, I love it. Yeah. Um, but that's there. Okay, so I've hit that first and the tide now is starting to run out. So um, I'll come in here and I might go up to here. The tide's running out this way. Sorry, it's there. So I might drift down from here um, and I'll work this just down the middle here. It's only maybe 30 metres wide or 20 metres wide. And I might just cast, 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 cast as I'm drifting out. And then I'll try around the entrance here and I'll see, okay, the current's going that way and the current's going that way. There's an eddy on that side right there and I'll, I'll hound that area, okay? Um, if I get nothing there, I've got a, maybe one or two, that's it. I'll then go in here because the current's coming out this way or it might be going that way. Whichever way it's going, there's another eddy in here. And there's some weed patches in here, so I'm going to really hammer that and I'll just cast maybe 10 casts into that area trying to get them. Um, there's a weed patch in the middle here, and that's maybe two metres deep, and I know there's weed in the middle there. I'll cast over the top of that and just slowly wind it. So in that scenario, I don't want it to hit the bottom because I get weeded up. So I'm just going to let it go down. I might take a risk near the bottom. <laughs> I'll hit, maybe just hit the bottom. Um, but I'll just sort of lift it out of the weed, and then I'll just steadily wind it with the rod tip up a little bit and just pull it across the top here. And I might pause one little bit when I know it's up a little tiny bit. Just pause for like just one or two or three seconds, let it fall back a little bit, they might grab it at that point, and then just slowly wind it again. It's all about technique. Um, and I'll do the same scenario up here. And, and same deal here, if this is going out here, obviously that's going to be eddy there, but you might get eddy in here as well before it, before it hooks around there. I might try that corner there where the eddy is. you just got to work out where the eddies are, that's for the calamari squid. When you're land based, um, if you've got a rock wall and if there's a change in direction of the rock wall and there's an eddy, that's where I'd be looking at. Or if you're at night time, I'd be looking at where the uh, lights are around the chatties and stuff and casting the steps beyond the light and bring it back in. Um, when I'm fishing in the broad water, uh, I'll just change this scenario. Those people who are from Brisbane, how many of you guys come down to the broad water to fish? Do a few of you come down? You do? How many of you have got kayaks if you haven't got a boat? Couple of you have, yep, three few of you. So um, I'd be definitely fishing um, at the front of Rob's place. <laughs> One of the best spots is, um, well actually, I, I might actually bring this up. For another five minutes I could do this. Um, I'll bring up the pictures and I'll show you how they would go. Okay, I'll tell you how to do it. Um, but at the moment, the squid are really stacked up two hours before high, on the high and one hour after. And then once that water gets dirty, you, you won't get them, they just disappear. And if it's windy and you've got too much drift, like I went out last Sunday, it was really windy. Um, my wife and I went out and um, we just, um, we, it was the middle of the day, high tide was around, I think around two o'clock or something. And uh, we just couldn't get any, they just weren't on. It was just too windy. Uh, so if it's too windy, you're drifting too fast, it just doesn't work. Um, you could use spot lock on your anchor and on your electric outboard and try to hold yourself on there but it's probably not worthwhile doing. So squidding works best, they don't like wind. When it's not windy, I don't like wind either, so go when it's not windy. Which, uh, glass is really good. A uh, bit, of, bit of wind on the water is okay, but not too much wind, yeah. Um, but if you have a kayak and you say went to the back of Waybreak Island, or if you've got a boat as well, um, and any of the sandbanks around the broad water, where you've got little channels going through the sandbank, like I showed you then. Um, if you pull up and this fish from the shore, I've got so many squid off the shoreline, casting at the weed patches from the shore, on the back of wave break and that sort of area. It's really good. So and it's the a calamari squid. Sorry. Yeah. When you say the back of wave break, mm. you mean on the ocean side? No, on the, on the Labrador the side. Yeah. Labrador side. And you're fishing. Um, Particularly, I get them where the houseboats are at the top end. Then that strange wooden boat there, and that little pond, that little pond's good. Um, when the tide drops a bit, actually, they seem to drop into there. 
Sometimes I'll bite there, sometimes they won't. They're big calamari ones. Um, and then I'll get them at the other end, not where the little party lagoon is at the back there on the south side of Waybreak. Not so much there, but, um, but across from there, there's like a little sand spit there. And you've got this, where the six knot zone is, zone is near um, uh, where the signs are, opposite lights at Labrador, near Charis. Um, and then there's a bank there where you dig Gabby's net on, uh, back at Waybreak right there. Behind there is a little drain and there's a lot of weed in there. It's always about a metre deep. We've done so well in there too at times. So that's a good area too. It is just pull up on the boat and walk the bank and cast as the tide's dropping. Good area. And if you kayak, you still start to paddle. And it's quite good. And it's, and it's beautiful little walk cast in there. Yep. Um, okay. I think that's about it on that. I just need Misako's going to come out and put that picture up on here so I can show you where to go. Any questions at all, folks, on the spoon? It is. Um, so the calamari, definitely. Um, the arrow squid, their natural habitat seems to be anything that's the deepest part of the broad water with the less current. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the Western Channel, as I always say, or the Eastern Channel, they don't like around the seaway, the current's too strong. So you won't get arrow squid. I've never got arrow squid past Bigger Creek on the west side, nowhere east of the close I've caught them is um, probably Kurrigi. Too much current. And on the south side, the closest I've caught them, caught them in the current there would be probably Air Sea Rescue Base, out in front of that in the main channel. But between there and Kurrigi, on the east side of the channel, they don't want to know about it. They just don't, aren't, don't exist. But the calamari squid do, they're in the rock wall, man. Do you yeah. find that they school up? They do. So when they, squid. you get lone squid. They obviously are just around. Yeah, thanks, Dave, for talking. You get them um, in the area, um, and they will be. Uh, you're trying, and you might get this one, and that's what you think there'll be more there. But that's it. That's the only one you get. So that's the lone squid. But like the other day with Martin, um, we would have hooked 16 in about 20 minutes. They'll just four rods. We had four rods out. Four four is actually too hard for us. We had to use just two. Yeah, no, so um, you invert it, more or less. So um, if you let him hang down and push the squid jig up, you'll come straight out. There's an art to netting them. So the reason it's not, not, not a uh, um, sarcastic, sarcastic um, thing to put a little net in there, a little net's better than no net. You've got to have a net, okay? So I don't know how many guys have got nets, but if you haven't got one, you've got one now. So um, you, those bigger ones, especially the ones that are just hooked on by their long tentacle, the candle tentacle, um, you have to net them because they'll snap off. They're just really stretchy, they pop off. And the cycle of tentacle we've lost. There's an art to getting squid in without getting ink though. That's really hard, <laughs> okay? Um, my suggestion is wear black clothing and have a wet rag so you can wipe the, the ink off your boat, jet ski or surf ski or whatever you got. Um, have a wet rag set up because um, as soon as it, as soon as it um, spurts, you have to wipe it. If it dries, it's really hard to get out. Even a gurney won't get it out. You need the acid and wash it out. So when they stop squirting, that's it then, yeah? No, I stop. <laughs> <laughs> there is no, that's it. Uh, so a lot of the time you'll let it, it you know it's well hooked, so I leave it in the water, let him squirt, squirt, squirt. Um, and um, you think, okay, that's it, he's done enough. You go lift it and <laughs> They'll squirt you again. So the best thing to do is, I find if you're quick, if you've got a, a little esky there with the lid off, a bit of ice in it, and it's gonna melt, doesn't matter. Have it open, and as soon as you've got it, you just lift it straight from there into that esky. The esky's gonna get black. If you don't put water in there, they don't squirt. If you put water in the esky, they squirt in the esky. It's really weird. So, um, but when they inhale, you gotta put water there, because when they inhale that cold water, they die really quick. Yeah, mate, yeah, just ice box and water. They, and they inhale it and they just, uh, they go to sleep straight away within five minutes or three minutes. Is this where it goes here? Robert, you can hold that box for us, please, mate. <laughs> so, um, sorry. Is there any difference between spiking them and just letting them die? There is a difference in the taste. Um, 
Uh, I like a lot of people say, oh yeah, the, the squid's too tough. I don't want to catch squid because they taste like crap. They're tough as you know. The cooking part of it is really, really important that you get it right, um, and that's called not overcooking. So just don't overcook. Um, when you spike it, mate, they definitely like fish. If you spike a spike of fish, um, the blood seems to uniform itself out, and it's really good. Um, and it's the same with um, with the squid too. Um, especially when I eat them that night. If I found if I don't spike it and I eat it that night, it is it's still not tough, but it's a little bit tougher. If I spike it and eat it straight away that night, it's um, quite quite uh, soft. Yeah. And you just sort of peel the, its hood up at the back and just spike it in there, in the back of its head. How many people eat the tentacle parts here? You should, it's the best part. Just a couple of things, so the two long ones that, that swing out, make sure you cut the suction caps off those, okay? Because they, they are, um, they have, uh, what do you call it? Uh, not poison. Toxin? <laughs> not toxin. <laughs> um, Germs, <laughs> germs. <laughs> no, I can't have the word for it. But uh, oh, you're here. Okay. Uh, saved by the picture. Okay, so um, just showing how tough these rods are. They're really good. <laughs> Oops. Thanks, Mr. Sacco. Oh, thank you, Herbert Lossa. So, um, do you want to turn that around too, though? That one there. No. So um, this is the broad border and where I suggest to go is squidding. So for those of you from Brisbane, um, as I said, I'd be trying all those piers from Redcliffe down to Redland Bay. Um, but for around here, if you, I'll start land-based first. Um, if you're land-based, um, you will catch them on the high tide. Where the, do you all know where Bayview Harbour is? Do you know where Bayview Harbour is? Okay, so where Bayview Harbour is, which is right, that's Runway Bay, just here, um, where this rock wall comes around. That's not Bayview Harbour. Uh, is that Bayview Harbour? Oh, map. that's Lowe's Creek, is it? Wrong map, wrong map. Go, go towards you. Okay, sorry. There. Oh, yeah, sorry. Down. Hang on, I'll put my glasses on. <laughs> where that red is. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, this one here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that's correct. Okay. That's right, right. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, that's Bayview Harbour there. So, where this rock, rock wall comes out of Bigger Creek here and hits the sand, if you fish off that rock wall down to about 100 metres along the sand here and cast a good 50 metre cast, um, you will catch an arrow squid there because we get them out of the boat there all the time from easy casting distance from the shoreline. Okay, the channel actually comes in here and goes quite close here. And you could actually probably in 150 metres down actually um, to this end here. So if you're shore based along there, high tide, early morning, um, you'll get squid. How deep is it there? It's probably about two and a half, three metres deep at, at high tide. Um, and it's very close to the shoreline and the shoreline goes out maybe just 10 metres and it drops off. Is yep. That, is that the part where they've just gone up and down a little sand? Yeah, that's correct, mate. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, that's just here. So you just where the rock wall ends and the sand starts. And for about 150, 200 metres along there, there's a, um, a uh, I think it's a green beacon in pretty close here to the shoreline or red. I think it's green actually. Oh, it might be red, sorry. Red. Um, that's pretty close here anyhow. Um, I'll just do land, sp land spots first. Um, you may get them at the end of Howard Street. I've caught them, that little inlet there, um, I've caught them straight at the front there, Rob. I'm sure you know that. <laughs> um, and you can cast the distance out to there as well. And there's a yellow buoy there. You can cast that distance, it's about 60 metres off the shoreline. Bit of a cast distance, but that's where you get the squid right there too, drifting in the boat. So definitely land, land based fishable. Um, the other good spot is down here at Southport um, at the, oh sorry, that's at Labrador. That's the Grand Hotel here. So that's where we were the other night, or last night, um, just off the jetty here and all that foreshore and all that night time along here. Um, the Seaway Wall, so the same from the tower here all the way around to your facing where the wall ends and you're facing back towards Labrador. Caught a lot of big squid off there for many, many years. It's been a really good spot. Um, I have caught a few over here in the boat cast in this side. I've caught more off the shore there than I have out of the boat casted back to the rocks, amazing enough. 
So you're better off walking it rather than fishing it from the boat. Um, that's where I got all the squid that night and I caught them there many times after on that north wall of wave break on the high tide they were in that corner there. Um, I'd, I'd catch them on this wall here on the south side. I've got that bit of purple mark there on your, you'll see that on your thing there. Um, all on that wall which is the south wall of wave break all the way along to it meets the sand and on this side of the north wall along here as well. So if there's two days of rain before, would you forget it? If there's two days of rain and it's heavy rain and the water goes dirty, 100%, yes. Even though the tides are right and everything's perfect, um, you just won't get many. But I will tell you, the, like, we had a lot of rain this year and obviously the water's dirty for five months and that's why the squid a bit late, I think. But um, even those heavy, odd rain we've had over the last month, say, that might rain, we might get... I don't know, 50 mil or something, two inches of rain in a three hour downpour, it doesn't make any difference, it's still clear. It has to be like two days of, yep. maybe anything over 150 mil, yep. I'd say, yep. <coughs> Give it a miss. <coughs> um, so getting back to the shore base, uh, this map over here. Uh, you, so oh, it's very good. Sorry, <laughs> you're onto it, Robbie. Um, this map over here, so. <coughs> That is Lotus Creek, and um, this is the pier at Southport right there. So that pier there um, is really good, and um, the guys catch it at night time. I caught it off the little floating pontoon down there if you're land-based as well. So we're talking about land-based now. Uh, that's very good, and um, I've caught them on those little at night time on those little um, jetties either side of the, of the main bridge at Sundale there. And I've caught them around the boat ramp on that side as well. I've never caught any on the, over this side, but on this side I have. Uh, you will get them if you can get in the marina here, but it's a bit tricky. Um, oh, that's the wall there that I talked about before, all the way on the front of the wall here. And that's probably about it for land base on the Gold Coast here. You will, will maybe get them down Tweed Heads off the, um, say, the the jetty where the um, boats and the little harbour down there behind the hospital. Um, but Talabudra and Crumbin Creeks, you may get them around the bridges at night time when it's high tide, but not not that many. Not as many as the broadwater. Um, now, boat fishing. I'll go back to this one here and I'll just bring that map across, Robbie, if you don't mind. Mm, sure. That's all right. Thanks, mate. So we'll start over here. So this is Karaji here. So do you all know where Karaji is? It's the campgrounds at, Strat at Stratty here. That's Little Crab Island, a Big Crab Island. That's Runner Bay Marina over here. So all the way along here, from that, there's a red up here actually. From that red down to those two or three greens down here, um, it's all good, good along there. And how, that's... How much depth is It's about uh, four to six metres there. And I'm working the bottom, on the bottom the whole time. Yeah. And that's where, that's where I was with Marty the other day, just along here. And we've been fishing down for about three years for the arrow squid. And that's where Masako was out the other day. And she always outfishes me on the squid somehow. <laughs> I think I'm too busy running three rods. She's doing one. But um, we've got some really big ones. Like, I mean, really big. So the ones that you've got a bit, those big white buckets. And when you put them in the bucket, they still stick out the top of the white bucket. They're big ones. Um, and that was along here, that was just last week. Um, Rhino Bay Marina, what I said about before, where the beacon is, at, the red beacon is to come out of the marina, from there up past the green up to Howard Street boat ramp, just drifting that whole main channel, um, is really good for arrow squid as well. And they're there now as, as we speak. Um, that's a definite. So you're talking the last two hours of the run in, first hour of the run out and high tide. Bigger Creek from Bayview Harbour entrance all the way through down to, like I said, down past the wall, down to the end down here, uh, and just drifting that main channel amongst the boats. So what you do is you do like one drift, might be here close to the shoreline, next drift in the middle, next drift out, out right on the edge of the, of the reds down there. So you're sort of covering the ground and you're fan casting sideways, not just straight in front of you. And, and hopping it back with the current, okay? And um, that's how you get them. <coughs> and the other two rods are just sitting at the back, 
standing up or low rod holders, whichever, and they're dragging, as I said, just above the bottom or just on the bottom. But checking them for weeds, they, they get weed caught up in the hooks. Um, obviously around the ground here, I haven't caught them much in the middle of the channel here, but they've got to be here. But there's so many boats in that area there now. They've all moved from Bums Bay to here, I think. Oh, they're crab as well. They're crabs. <laughs> okay, so you've got to dodge the boats through there. But um, where the yellow boys are right near in, where that six knot so sign starts, um, actually there's a green boy just up here past the six knot zone before it. From there down to the Grand Hotel boat ramp is a good drift as well, if you've got a boat or kayak or whatever. Very close to the shoreline. Um, and then we'll go to this map over here, which probably is going to switch across for us. Thanks, Rob. Um, so we've talked about there, there. That's the continuation of the Grand there. Um, that's, I'm just saying up there, you can use the foreshore all the way along down to Aqua Building if you're land based. Um, that's where you saw those couple of big squid last night. Um, this is the Air Sea Rescue base here, and this is Sea World. So you'll get them out the front of Air Sea Rescue. There's a few boats more there. It's quite deep, it's like eight metres deep. You just do drifts, just do drifts across, 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 even right across to the green. So you're going right through the channel across the other side. On the high tide, I really work that area hard. Um, and on the run up tide, I like to work, I go one side on the reds here, I'll do a long drift, I mean like a really long drift, if you two k's or three k's, and then I'll do one down the middle, dodging all the boats and the waves, preferably high tide early morning's best, and then I'll do one on the western side on the, um, on the greens, all the way down. Um, that's the, back to the pier at Southport, this area here, there it is there. Um, all the way in front of that, it's not too bad as well and all the way through those boats here, all the way down to the bridge on that western side is quite good. And in front of um, that's um, Mirage and uh, all the marina there, that's Southport Yacht Club. All the way in front of those is really good as well, guys, up to the bridge here. I have caught a couple of calamari squid off the TSS area there too, off the jetty there, casting from the boat. And if you're shore-based, it might be worth a try down the end of Winchester Street there. Is there any questions on that at all? Um, how many people here fish jumping pin area? A few of you do. So, like I haven't caught many arrow squid. You get them up in Brisbane way, like from, say, Maclay North, and you'll get them all through the broad water, but they don't seem to hang out much at jumping pin. <laughs> um, but I have caught them um, <coughs> drifting when I'm flathead fishing. I have a squid dig out, just drag in the bottom, as I do sometimes. And I'm drifting between Tipless Channel entrance and heading towards Jacob's Well, the entrance that the broad water comes out at, before you turn left to Jacob's or right to the pin. So from Tipless Channel to that channel, on the main deep area there, just drifting down the middle. I've caught ar big arrows there. That's the only place I've ever caught in, the, in jumping pin. The other, you guys might have a secret spot if you do, you can tell me later. <laughs> I'll check it out for you. Um, that's probably about it. Any questions on the, on the spot circle, folks? Anyone got that? Okay, cool. Great, thanks for Zucker. Um, so when I'm in the boat, as I said, I'm just drifting the two rods at the back and I'm working out whether they cast up current or down current. I'm trying to work out what they're biting on the day and I'm just letting it hit the bottom. I cast out a long cast, maybe 30 metres, 40 metres. Leave the bar arm open, it hits the bottom. I take up the slack and I'll just do that first lift up, see if they're on there. If they're not on there, I'll just lift it up, we'll go down again. Because I've got such a, a long distance and I'm not hounding the same spot for a second cast because I'm drifting and I'm moving, on about the third lift up, I might do an aggressive strike then and drop it back down, okay? On the way back to the boat. Got to play around. Have many of you guys caught squid yet at all? How, how many people caught squid this year? Many, like. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good question. Good comment, sorry. Has anyone got like 10 or 15 in a session yet at all this year? 10 or 15 in a session? No. It's good about to get hurt. Oh, we have got a light here. We do have one here. Only medium. Oh, okay, this is a medium one. Okay, thanks, though. Um, yeah, so they're about 119 bucks, your price. But this is what it looks like. I haven't got a battery here to start it up, but as you can see, the lights are, I'll pass this around all the way around it, but this will light up this whole room under your boat. They're very, very bright. 
Oops. And obviously fully waterproof. So you can drop that, I think there's about 12 metres of coil with that, so you can drop it down quite deep. Yeah, so I see guys doing that with their floats, but not so much um, on the on the squid jig. But believe it or not, there was a squid jig you get where you could put the little thing up inside of it. But I think it's a bit like the um, the LED one it didn't work, it didn't sell. Yeah, I think you need to make it look more natural rather than synthetic, so to speak. Yeah. Depends on areas. Do you go much further north um, up the river, past the bridge? I've only caught them at TSS. That's it. That's the only place I've caught them as far up. But I have, I will admit, I've done a lot of, of fishing up the river for whiting or whatever. And at night I've seen big squids in Parsi. But I've never rigged up when I'm fishing for whiting, but probably in the future I should be. You should really have a squid, squid jig on a rod everywhere you go. <laughs> like I catch them offshore here too. I've caught many when I'm stamper fishing and they've hooked up. The not off the beach? Oh, off the beach at Labrador you will. But not the surf. No, never in the surf, mate. I don't know if they come in that far, they get eaten, I think. Yeah. But I've caught them out when I'm fishing out and say, just in close, 18, 24 fathoms, I've caught them out there on jigs and stuff. Um, and they work quite well. The other jig that works quite well, besides those vibes going around, is the ZX40, the little, um, uh, what brand are they? Yeah, Eco Gear with the Sist Hooks. Again, the kids hop in the bottom. And next week you get a squid on there. They love them. They really do like them. Yeah. Yeah. Was oh, that right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's uh, try a squid jig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, normally squid jig does work better, but some days they work. They work really well. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, so. So, guys, you're all ready to roll. You into it? Good. Okay. Cool. Exactly the same, matey. Everywhere I've been, it's been, even when I was down in Melbourne, my mate took me out, he's like the squid legend down there at, um, at, from Rye. And um, he was the same deal, exactly the same. He said two hours after high is a really good time. At high and two hours after. So, yeah. that's, um, I know it's on the map that the area around the um, broadwater boat ramp and that channel that goes out between the two sand yes. banks there. There's a little eddy on the southern side as you yes, there is. That yes, so so where that um, you're talking about, like from the Lotus Creek, there. Yeah, no, the, no, oh, no, so it, well, sea well. Straight from the, 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 the twin boat Yeah, yep. The That's right. There's a green marker there. Yep. A, a yellow, yellow yep. Crossover. On yep. The yep. There's a little, little bay. And it's quite deep there. Yeah. They're there. Hundred percent. I called them there with Dad last week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We only got. I think we got about four or five. I've got, it might have been six. How many did we get, Dad? Over there. Six, I think it was. Yeah. We just quickly went out for an hour before work and got six nice ones there. Right in that exact spot, right up near. The yellow's outside the greens. That's over actually on the yes. green. Okay. Yeah, because that whole eddy's in there. Yeah. yeah. And it was an eddy exactly. Is that because <coughs> the tide when it's going out? It actually, it actually was near low tide too when we did it the other morning last week. Um, about this time last week. And uh, well, it was just eddy there, not much current. We're just sitting there. Once you went out a bit further, you drifted straight out to the seaway. Yeah. What's, what's your favourite way of cooking buddy? Um, and yeah, my wife you cooks. Uh, okay, so how do you do it? What do you marinate? I'll ask her because she so cooks I'm really good. Uh, you can marinate them in milk. You can marinate them and they will go a bit softer, but we don't bother to do that because either way we cook, they're still soft. But you sometimes when we do the karagi type one, you do. Um, is it soy and soy and sake? Soy and sake yes. Japanese sake. And what else? Is there any ginger or any um, garlic or anything? Put a little bit of ginger and garlic if you want. So you just cut it into the portions and then um, you um, put it in like a, a bowl, in, pull the, that on, mix it up. Let it sit overnight, cover it. And then the next day, uh, is it potato starch? Yeah. So what you do is you take it from there just sort of drip it off a little bit and then straight into potato starch and then into shallow fry. And you just put it in there maybe one minute, not even, and then turn it over to the other side and it's cooked. Two minutes max. In oil oil? In oil, yeah, like virgin oil. Uh, olive oil. So potato starch? Potato starch instead of um, flour. The flour's a bit heavy and it gets a bit thick and so oily. This is not very oily. Do you use corn flour around? Uh, you probably could use cornflour. I never tried it though. Could you use cornflour again? 
Satisfaction is, uh, is very, very, very light. Yeah, and uh, and it's so soft and nice. <laughs> the taste is really good. <laughs> yeah, we're always and there's never we go through so many squid. <laughs> um, but if you want to do a calamari way, um, I'm still trying to get it right. It depends on how hot the oil is. If you have too hot, it'll, it'll spit. Um, but if you do do it, a secret that my wife taught me is um, so you say you're doing a batter or breadcrumbs um, when you're cooking it. Again, not too deep of oil, just a shallow fry and just turn it over. But put the lid on, and the lid stops it from um, from it falling off the, the outside of the of the uh, squid. Stops the breadcrumbs from falling off. But if you don't put the lid on, it spits and it falls off. It explodes, sort of thing. Because squid does explode if it's too hot. Okay, so. Do you want to Yep. Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So last night um, we moved before probably twice, twice, three times. So we went up because after we got one or whatever, we just said, okay, let's just have a quick look up here. And that's when I saw the other two because I wanted to try that spot because I've caught squid there before, and they were there. But those weren't biting for some reason, but they were calamari, which I was happy to see. Yeah, yeah they're big. The bodies were probably that big. Yeah. yeah, and they're a lot fatter. They're they're not skinny. They're quite wide. Um, but uh, yeah, so as I said, three or four casts and try, change your technique if there's nothing happening. You're better off maybe walking down another 20 metres or 50 metres. Um, try and see weed at night time as well. Try and find where the weed is or whatever it might be holding them. Or bait fish is good as well. They love eating little white bait and stuff like that. Yeah, it'll hold them. Yes, mate? So the western side of um, bay bait Yes. The calamari squid, and but that's up around the weed patches at the shallow end, and then in the deep end, the channel's arrow squid. I've never caught a calamari squid out in the deep there. Yeah, but I've caught them off the rock wall again. Like I said, I've, I've cast that um, that area from the boat ramp around to Aqua by boat so many times. Never caught a calamari. Caught never caught a hundred, but caught maybe lots off the rock wall land base off the calamari. It's a bit like the rock wall and the seaway. It doesn't work from a boat. And, and size limit? And, and now, 20 squid per person? Uh, no size limit. So you get a lot of little arrow squid. They seem to come through in, in patches. When the new little ones arrive, they're like that. Within about four weeks, they're like that. They're, all their big mates rock up. I don't know how it works. but <laughs> They just big ones just turn up all of a sudden when you get, leave it go for three, three or four weeks without trying for them. Next time you go out, all of a sudden they're big. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is here. I think they grow fast. Mm. Yeah. That's 20 together. 20 per person. Of each species or just? Uh, oh, that's a good question. I think it's uh, yeah, it combined. combined. Combined, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's too complex. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, definitely 20 is enough. How's that sound? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they freeze really well. I don't know if you know this, but squid's one of the only things that is very hard to get, um, like, Frost bit, like permafrost, what do you call it? It, it, um, it can be frozen for years. It doesn't actually um, decay. I think you can No, freezer burn, that's the word for it, right? Yeah. Uh, you No, I clean them first. Clean them. So when you clean them, it's an art to clean them too. Um, you need like a bit of um, dowel, maybe around about, depending on the size of the squid you're catching, maybe 20 mil or 30 mil. And um, <coughs> so what I do is I break the two fins off the side, they just sort of peel off, they peel off a lot of the skin as well. Um, and most of it come off, you pull the head out and all the, all the guts, and then you push the dowel from the bottom up and invert it, and then just clean all the stuff off it. That's the easy way. Yeah, or br brush handle or whatever you got. You don't eat the wings on the calamari? I, I eat the wings, but I take them off, and then I try and peel the skin off the wings. <laughs> yeah. And then the head part, just to show you on the head part, because a lot of people say, oh, the head, not going to eat the head. You know, before I met my wife, I used to, throw, I used to use them for stamper bait or throw them out. <laughs> she goes, what are you doing? <laughs> but um, so the head, oh, sorry, another one that's running out of ink. I've got the cap off. So the head's sort of like, um, uh, I guess it's a bit shaped like this, and that's the eyes there, eyes there. It, and this is where the body is sort of here going back this way. And it's sort of joined by this membrane. 
uh, which goes up inside of the little long sort of piece of it. They're really good to eat, by the way. So when you pull the head off, these little long bits come out with it. And then you've got the legs out here, sort of thing. And, and a couple of bigger, longer ones as well, which are the ones you chop the ends off. Um, my wife does snip off the little, little things along here, but I think the main ones are the end, too long ones, you chop the ends off those. Um, but what you do is you just sort of pull the head out, these come out here. You sort of cut this section here out of the equation um, and the beak will be sitting in here sort of thing. That'll come back with this and this will all be cut off, uh, broken off separate. So you get the leg section and you get this end section here. And this has got a little bit of a hard head on it and that part you discard. Is that right there? Masaka loves cleaning squid. I don't know why she loves cleaning squid, but I don't mind her cleaning clean squid. <laughs> So you cut that piece there out where the eyes are. That's what you do there. Yeah, pretty well. And the beak area. So that all comes out. So you get this piece here and this piece here with these soft, long prong things on it. And that piece there. And this is discarded. And that's the way you do it. I remember in Japan, squid's really nice sashimi, guys. Like so nice. Arrow squid are like the best. So you clean it and you cut it just into um, little pieces, like long pieces. And um, don't do it in the tube, do it in flat pieces. So cut the tube open flat. Um, and uh, yeah, just soy and a bit of wasabi if you want to. But it's so sweet. That's <laughs> it's the sweetest. And um, when we're in Japan, um, there's a place we go to and you catch the squid out of the, out of the little kid's pool and then they prepare it for you fresh and th they don't cut the ends of the tentacles off, they just leave them there and you put it in your mouth and they wiggle around your mouth as you're eating them. <laughs> and uh, quite interesting, you feel a big one When you use fresh water, it doesn't matter? No, it doesn't matter, mate. Salt water is always best to clean any seafood. Yeah. It just seems to retain the flesh a bit better. Yeah. Uh, but no, at the end of the day, we clean under the tap, so yeah, yeah it's fine. Keep the water running because that ink sac. So the ink sac comes out in this part here, and um, that's why I suggest you just sort of cut it off and discard it straight away. Because you put it down, it seems to just run forever, and it stains the sink as well. And it's got a stainless steel sink. Yeah. Okay. You can you use the ink? Yeah. So we've used it. In, she's done it in pasta, and as you've probably maybe been to some restaurants, they have in the pasta. I'm not a big fan of it. It's a bit blanched and screechy in your teeth. Uh, but have you used it for pasta, mate? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. No, I, I had a seafood business. Oh, there we go. Okay, please tell us your, your stories. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I cleaned them out for those. Yeah, okay. So, and the ink, you just contain yeah, it and put it in the fridge? Just, just use the squeeze there and put it in the container. Yeah, right. Like yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, we've done it in pasta. And the pasta goes obviously black. Uh, but in a lot of restaurants, it's like, Cool to have, trendy. yeah, trendy. That's the word for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have any secrets on cleaning the squid at all? No, you pretty much nailed. No, yeah, it's about the, right. The, yeah. The rod up the yeah, other yeah. Way. Invert it. Yeah, it's yeah. easiest way. Yeah. Perfect, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You can get squid brushes too, but if you get a um, not an old one, I get a new one. I <laughs> like a one of those stiff bristle hand brushes, <coughs> and you can actually just scrape scrape it if you want to get the last bit of stuff off, you know, and hit it with that. That works all right too. Um, yeah, so give that a crack. Um, there was one, one thing I was going to say, and I have tried it too, is if the current's running really hard or it's really windy, I talked about before, and it's hard to get squid, um, I, I thought, well, I'm mad here. I've got to think of something that's going to work. And I put a four ounce snapper lead, and I've run like a pattern oster with a squid jig on it and caught squid on it, and it worked quite well in windy conditions. And the, and the squid jig's about, I had my, uh, Four ounce on the bottom, up about two metres with about a metre and a half off my three-way swivel. I'm just using a little three-way swivel to did bring. Cut off the, off the squid jig. Off. Yeah, that's a good call, part mate. Part yeah, or s some of these squid jigs out there, some of the dearer ones, they actually have like a very small lead. Some are very slow, slow sinking. Um, but yeah, that'll work too. You can cut that. Um, but it definitely works, I, I did really well. So the squid jig's just sitting there 
on its own, just sitting in the water, a metre above the bottom sort of thing. So give that a crack maybe if you just want to put out a drifting one. Okay, that's it. No other questions at all, guys? Oops. Something fell down. Um, okay, we're going to do the draw. So, um, just to let you know, the next seminar, guys, we're doing is flat air fishing. So we're doing two lots of flat air fishing seminars. We're what doing flat uh, flathead. <coughs> so that's because we've got flathead classic coming up and whatever, and everyone chases flatheads now. And the first one we're doing is on hard bodies. So um, it's everything hard. So we're going to be doing trolling, we're going to be doing casting uh, big weight baits and baits onto the top of flats, um, and hard vibes like metal vibes. Um, so it'll cover that. And then the next seminar we're doing after that is on soft plastics and soft vibes. So keep it separate because there's so much to learn. Um, and we're doing as a competition, I'll tell you guys about it. We did it three years ago, we haven't done it for three years because of COVID, but we do a competition um, which will run for the next six weeks and it'll be drawn um, about the 10th of October. And every $50 is spent on flatty gear, doesn't matter, rods, reels, line, lures, doesn't matter. Um, you get a ticket. And then at, on that time when it comes around to in, on the 10th, um, we draw out four names and then four people meet us that next weekend down at Paradise Point. So we used to do it, we've done it for a few years now. And there's four of us, all ex-staff or ourselves. So myself, Stuart, Big Tall Dean is to work with us and Michael Green. So half those <coughs> guys have won the Flatter Classic or come second or third, whatever. And, um, and we've got a backup guy as well He'll be like, um, what's the guy, uh, Sig, is it? Off the, um, the drive, the, oh, I can't remember the car, the car. Uh, yeah, Top Gun, that's it. Yeah, the, the guy you don't know, you don't know who he is, right? The Sig, yeah, Sig, right? <laughs> so, um, you won't know who he is because he'll be all dressed up on the day. And anyhow, um, he's the reserve. If one of us can't turn up, we get sick or whatever. So we... So we draw four guys out, you guys be down there, then you draw one of us out of the hat, and it's a one-on-one, -on -one. so only one person can come on that day. And one of you guys draw one of us to fish with us for the day on our boat, and we take it. And, and you guys, I think it's $1,000, uh, $750, oh, sorry, 1500 300 and 200 or 100 So everyone gets, well, the four guys get something, but you guys are winning for a prize, the best fishing point things, works on the same point scale as the Flatter Classic. And and us four guys, uh, the boat owners, are, uh, we're fishing for a rod, so we fish competitively because we want to beat each other, so we take you to our good spots, which is why it's after the Flatter Classic. <laughs> Not before, in case you are fishing the Flatter Classic. <laughs> uh, but it's a great day. Then we come back, so we, we sort of meet down at about 5 in the morning, we're out, we left by 5.30, we come back about 2.30, 3 o'clock, so it's a big day fishing and we, and we work hard. We come back and have sushi. Rob's done it before, and uh, and um, and a few beers and drinks afterwards, and we see who wins and add the points up. So that's a great time. So just remember that for the next six weeks. Okay, done all that. Looks like I was going to draw. I'm going to draw. So first prize, guys, is about three hundred and fifty bucks, round about. It's a combo and a couple of good squid jigs, and it goes to. It goes to um, Dash. I need my glasses on. Um, I need my glasses to follow my glasses. Anyhow, <laughs> it's Darren. Darren Sawyer. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good on you, Darren. Well done, buddy. So that's yours. Can we pass this down, Darren? So I'll see how long the tip lasts. <laughs> good on you, mate. And that's a really good little squid jig. And it's got um, like $70 Japanese braid on there, too. It's really good stuff. <laughs> It's two piece. Are you riding a bike, DJ? Can you get it home? Yeah, I'll be fine. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought you would be. <laughs> okay, the second one I think is around about two hundred something dollars worth of really good squid jigs. Um, I can take that out yet. No, I haven't ever. I just see if I get remember the numbers and tell them who they are. Okay, it's the number eight, Glenn Dees. Don't you, Glenn? Well done, buddy. I'll throw this to you, my friend. Sorry. Good uh, tough. Okay. That's back there, then. So we've got about 1100 bucks for the prizes tonight, guys, in total. Uh, the next one is Michael 
Camillary. Camillary. There we go. Thanks, Michael. Where are you, buddy? Good on you, mate. This is you. I don't like throwing things out of the top. I don't take a punt. My old rugby days. Thank you. Um, and we're going to go one more. Actually, a few more yet. Okay, this one here. I think it's still about I'm close to 100 bucks worth. Um, number 11, Brian Cooper. Brian, got anybody? I'll pass this one. <laughs> Thanks, mate. And we'll go a couple more. I think even the last one's still around about 50, 60 bucks or something. This one's about 80, I think. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that last. Uh, number 10, Simon. Oh, Simon, how you going, Simon? And I, was call, and I was calling you Josh today. Thanks, mate. Ta. And uh, last one here. Thank you, Dave. We've got a couple of Yozuri hats as well, guys. Uh, number 16, which is Shane. Come here, Shane. Well done, mate. Oh, that one there. Thanks, Robbie. Should come more often, Rob. <laughs> I won't throw the hats because I'd be like boomerang, so I'll come back and hit me in the head. Uh, number 20 down the back. Peter, I see you, buddy. I'll leave the hat here, you can grab it on the way out. Oh, actually, I'll pass it down. Thanks, Robbie. And uh, one more. So, guys, thanks for coming along. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you learn heaps. And um, if you have any questions, you just ask one of us here, okay? Back row again, number 22, Adam. Well done, mate. Hat. I'll get it later. Yeah, I'll <laughs> take the punt. <laughs> okay, thank you. Guys, thanks for coming along. We're open for another hour. Stewie's downstairs. Doing anything, let me know. Just to let you know, we did have those two combos on special. One's one, or oh, three actually. Uh, one's about 279 down to 199 or somewhere in there. Um, do you but, have them down there? Yeah, he's got them down there. I think I've only got one each of the, of the dearer ones, but I'll take them down with me now. And they're um, about 200 bucks off each, off retail. But one's about 319 and one's about 369. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Masako. Okay, thank you, guys. Cheers. Thank you. I'll come straight downstairs and I'll let you guys out. Stuart's probably got the door open already, I think. I'll put my glasses. Oh.